This video is sponsored by Brilliant. So I want to show you guys how to solve this equation because it's decided so that there's a very nice way to do it instead of just raise both sides to a third power and then continue with the algebra. Let's talk about this right here first though. The key is, notice that we have x and negative x. They are just zero if you combine them, right? But both of them are instead of cube roots. So how do we really proceed? Well, I really want to get rid of this cube root, but I cannot cube the left hand side. So why don't I just look at this by itself? I will call this to be A and do the same thing right here, call that to be B. So if you look at this right here and just raise that to the third power, we will get the inside only, which is x minus 40. Similarly, b cubed will be negative x plus 3. And when we combine them, the x and negative x will cancel. We get negative 37. But does that really help? Well, let's have a look. Right here, originally, it's just a plus b equaling negative 1. And now we have a cubed plus b cubed equaling negative 37. And here's a very nice identity that I would like to introduce you guys if you haven't seen that before. If you look at this right here, so here's another note, a plus b, I'm going to raise that to the third power. And you can expand this by using the Pascal's triangle or the binomial theorem. You will get a cube, and then the next coefficient is 3. Remember, it's 1, 3, 3, 1. And then the power of A will go down by 1. And then the power of B will go up by 1. And then you continue. So 3A, B squared, and lastly, B cubed. So we see we do have the A cubed and B cubed. Let's put them together. Next though, I would like to look at these two terms and then factor out the common factor. 3, one of the A's, and one of the B's. And then we will get a plus b here. So now as you can see, we have a cubed plus b cubed and then a plus b. With these numbers, we can get to a b. And once we have a b and a plus b, we can reduce this to a quadratic equation, which is really nice. So if you look at this and then raise both sides to a third power, we will then get exactly what we have right here a cube plus b cube plus 3ab times a plus b and that's going to be negative 1 to the third power which is negative 1 and just go ahead and solve it this right here is negative 37 plus 3ab and this is negative 1 the original negative 1 and this negative 1 is after the cube now solving for ab we can add 37 to both sides, so we get 36, and then divided by negative 3. This tells us that AB equals negative 12. So, putting things together, A plus B is negative 1, while AB is negative 12. From here, we can solve for B, which is negative 1 minus A, and then put that in there. So we get A times negative 1 minus a is equal to negative 12, and we will have a quadratic equation. So this right here will give us negative a minus a squared is equal to negative 12, and then really just solve it real quick. We will then have moved this to the other side, but write it down first. a squared plus a minus 12 equals 0. Factoring, we get a plus 4 times a minus 3 it's equal to 0, so a equals negative 4, or a equals 3. Now, do we also have to find out what b is? Uh, we should, right? But for this one, it doesn't really matter, because if a is negative 4, you can plug into here, b will be 3. Uh -huh. If a is 3, plug into here, b is negative 4. Very nice. Not only that, because we are about to put this back to this expression and then figure out what x is. If you do the same numbers for b and then figure out the x right here, they will match. You can go ahead and try that. So I'm just going to work out from here. And this will tell me that 
cube root of x minus 40 is equal to negative 4. And then solve it, raise both sides to a third power, and we will see that will cancel. So that's negative 64, and I will have to add 40 to it. x will be negative 24. And then do the same thing here, cube root of x minus 40 being equal to 3, raise both sides to the third power, cancel. 27 plus 40, x is 67. And I will tell you that they are both correct. Technically, you should plug in and then check. But I checked it already, so you can trust me. Now, as I know you guys, you guys would like to know if there are any non-real solutions, right? I don't know. I kind of suspect there might be, but I don't know. I don't know how to find it. If you do know, you can feel free to let me know. But I'm pretty sure that, that, that might be it. So, hope you liked today's video, and since you watched the video until the end, I know that you like math a lot, right? And if you also want to learn more about how to solve equations like the one that we did, or just problem solving in general, then I will highly recommend you to check out today's sponsor, Brilliant.Work. Brilliant is an online learning platform that helps you get smarter every day with thousands of interactive lessons in math, science, programming, and more. What I love most is how it forces you to think. You are not just passive reading or watching, you are solving real problems step by step, and that's how real learning should be. Personally, I like Brilliant because it reminds me how I learned math growing up, by playing around with ideas and struggling a little until I really got it. It's that kind of hands-on thinking that helped me become a better problem solver, and I see the same effect when I recommend it to my students. And if you're working on algebra or calculus, their courses are especially strong. Everything is built up to help you really understand. Now, you can try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for 30 days. Go ahead and visit the link brilliant.work slash blackpenrepen or scan the QR code on screen or you can also click on the link in the description. When you do that, you will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. So go ahead and check them out. I want to thank Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. I also want to thank you guys for checking them out. But anyways, that's it.